so I lied. Uh, last one wasn't the last one. This is now part eight, and I think this will be the last one. All right, so this is uh, part eight of how to write engaging scenes, and this is brought to you by Master Edit. You can visit the Master Edit website by clicking on the link in the description to your right or to your left if you're in the channel view. It's really cool. I like the software I use all the time. It saves a lot of time, and I just recommend go checking it out. Okay. So we had the automated response, and the next thing I want to think about is the willful bodily response. But this is a physical response in reaction to an outside source, uh, like pulling away, jumping, slapping. So this is going to be, in, in, in this example here then, what is Skyla's bodily response, the direct bodily response to what just happened, to their mouth stretching a possibly long, and to them flying at her. So she does have a physical body response. Instinctively, Skyla held an arm in front of her face, her elbow, point, her elbow pointing out. So I actually covered, I actually kind of did both. Her, that, her, her physical response was sort of an automatic response. You know, because sometimes your automatic response is just throwing your arm in front of your face when something comes at you. And so, you know, I actually thought about this. I was actually thinking about these principles when I was writing this chapter. And sometimes I miss, you know, so I go back on rewrites and fill in the blanks, you know, fill in more of these responses. As, as you saw earlier. Um, so anyway, that's her, that's her response. I could also maybe mention some of these other things, like her heart pounds really fast, her heart's racing, but I, I do that enough already in this chapter. I don't, you don't want to overdo it. It becomes melodramatic. Next thing you want to think about is the speech. What is the character, does a character say something in direct response to what's happening? Now this might be an automatic response, like a cuss word. That usually happens automatically without you even thinking about it. But does she have any other responses, you know, that is verbal responses to what just happened? She looked away and closed her eyes, preparing for the hot scraping that she that she was sure to, that was sure to come. This sort of is like introspection. It's, it's narrating, but it's sort of introspection because I'm I'm sharing her thoughts. This is what introspection is. It's like you're sharing the character's thoughts without saying, you know, they're not literal thoughts, but it's kind of what's going through her head, and you have to narrate that. You have to kind of narrate. What's going through the character's head? Well, I'm thinking, well, what's going through her head? She's, she's anticipating the pain that's going to happen from them coming at her because they're made of a bunch of leaves and sticks, and they're going to push through her with leaves and sticks, and that's going to scrape against the burn marks she has because she had uh, got eaten by a man-eating man tree, was stuck in the stomach with the stomach acids, and when, it, and she, when she got spit out, she, all the acids of the stomach burned her all over her body, so she has body burns all over her her face and everything. And so she's expecting that when they rub against her, it's going to hurt. Uh, so I, you know, I just kind of narrate that. So that's that part. Right, and that's all I share. Uh, I only share her automatic body response and then her thoughts, and then I go right into the next, the next motivator. That is the next thing that happens outside of her. I could have, um, oops, I could have probably went into maybe a speech, maybe she said something like, um, maybe she screams or, um, no, that, that, that doesn't, no, she wouldn't scream, but maybe she says something, but she's not really the talking type when it comes to that particular situation, so she's not like, you know, I can't think of anything that she would say, so. The next is thoughts, not, and so um, the next thing you want to think about as your character is responding, so you have the body, the, the automated response, the physical body response, so a physical body response also can be that, you know, like before, she pulls, she pulled away from them. Um, then you have your speech response, and then you want to think of thought response. Now, remember, this is the direct response, the direct thought response to the outside source, to what's happening. So in this case, this is Skyla's direct thoughts to what she just saw, to what just happened. That is to their um, face, their mouth stretching and possibly long, and then flying at her. She doesn't really have enough time to really think about their mouths yet, so I'd have to wait till after everything calmed down, then she can think about the mouths again. And that's, I should probably make a note for myself to do that in the next chapter, uh, now that she has this time to, you know, it, it's in my, my um, exhale scene, you know, my breather scene where they contemplate everything and think about, so I should have them talk about them possibly, them possible mouths and how crazy that was. And I can, you know, that's a good time to have some comedy with dialogue or something, or just inner, inner monologue, inner, inner thoughts, inner spectrum. But nonetheless, I still had her thought process as being represented here 
uh, as her direct thought process to the action. Okay, the next thing then is now counteractions. Now, obviously, you know, you know, you won't always be able to do all of these uh, every time your main character responds to an outside stimulus. Sometimes it'll only be one of these. Sometimes it'll only be two of these. Sometimes it will be all of them. Um, but you should always have one of these here, an immediate response to what happened. Then, do they have a counteraction? There's different kinds of counteractions. So you have a bodily counteraction. This would be like um, if now she you know, shot her magic. She's, she's a lightning elf. She can control lightning uh, by sucking electrons from around her, and then she can um, c produce lightning. So she could shoot them with lightning, and then all the leaves would burn up and catch on fire. That that would be helpful, and, and she, she does end up doing that. But I, if I had her do that right now, that would be her, her, her counter action now. But she's still... She's still like retreating. So if this was a fight, a boxing match, she's still retreating away, dancing away, looking for the opportunity for her to come back and strike. So she's not going to do this yet. But you always want to think about this, you know, these processes, especially when you're editing. Can I ha could I have, you know, a counteraction right now? You can uh, pause and read this if you want. Also, as a counteraction, what's the speech? Does the person say something now to take control of the situation and do their thoughts change to take control of the situation. So these are these are the points you want to go through when editing or even when you, all, you also want to try to keep these points in mind. And the more you practice doing these points um, and the more you edit doing these points. So you might want to practice writing a short story, uh, doing everything you've learned in this series, writing you know, the inhale scene, exhale scene, and think of the worst thing that happened, the worst thing that happened. Start with the person goes to the bathroom and something bad happens. Their toothbrush, you know, explodes. <laughs> um, but that's, like, unlikely. But, uh, you know, the mirror falls <laughs> out of nowhere. It's like it was loose or something, and it, like, falls and crashes and breaks, and a shard of glass rips through their wrist, and they're bleeding really bad. You know, how do they react to that? Uh, you know, and keep thinking of the worst thing that happened on the way to the hospital. You know, keep making things get worse and worse for the character until you have a story. And, and do this, and this breathe and breathe out scenes. And then keep all this in mind. That is, if you need to, write all this down in, in, uh, on a Word document page and look at it as you're writing. Okay, now my character needs to respond to the outside stimulus, the, the glass cutter wrist. Okay, glass cutter wrist. Automatic, automatic, automatic response. What happens? She jerks her hand away, uh, you know, and and then she automatically crap. She automatically, uh, you know, grasps her wrist to stop the bleeding. So she, uh, so first she, her first automatic response is jerk her arm away, hurts. Then then share the the, the emotions because it's also automatic responses is, is emotional responses, you know, pain uh, in the arm, and and then describe that. You know, she feels the the burning pain in her wrist. And then her emotional response to that when she looks at it. So then out, and her another automated response is she looks at her wrist, sees the blood, uh, starts to panic, heart starts to beat faster. You know what? What's her willful body response now? Is to grasp onto her wrist, her wrist uh, to try to stop the bleeding. Maybe she uh, looks around, grabs toilet paper, or something, shirt. You know, wraps it up, screams. You know, need help, hospital. Share her her speech. So she screams, her thoughts, oh my God, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to die, I'm going to bleed to death, you know, I need to get a doctor right now, I need stitches, you know, whatever her thoughts are, all, you share all that through introspection, through narration. And then, you know, does she have any counteractions? What's her direct, does she have any direct body responses now? I need to take my own action, I need to do something. She decides to now take control of the situation uh, rather than things that's happening to her, she's now causing things. She goes and decides to call 911 or... Um, you know, she gets in the car and drives herself, whatever happens. What's her speech? Does she say anything to directly take control? Maybe she just screams for her mom, come help me. Um, thoughts, you know, that are, her, you know, now she's going to start taking control of the situation, whatever. Um, so you always want to do that. Think about all these things as, you know, a after something happens to your character, an outside source, somebody says something to her. Think about all the responses that you can go through. And as you're writing that story, um, do that for every single time, and eventually it'll start becoming kind of like second nature, where you just kind of go through those those modes automatically without having to look at these each time. But look at this each time as you're writing a story for the first time, and think about when something happens to her, go through all those uh, responses. Okay, so that's it.